Oh, yes, Mzanzi, welcome back to your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Monday's edition is getting off to a great start, and we're going to carry on with a beautiful conversation right now. We're chatting about everybody uh, in our country that has maybe ventured overseas and what the experience was like, and we've got some athletes uh, who have done exactly that too. And joining us to uncover the ups and downs of pursuing their passion far from home and from adapting to new cultures and overcoming illegal burdens. This is an extraordinary journey, and here to chat to us right now about her stay in Japan is Springbok 7's and women's player, Nadine Rossi in the building! Yes! <laughs> Nadine, how are you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Oh, <laughs> it's good to have you back in, in SA. How's it feel being back home? Um, it's good being back home. Yeah. Um, must say I'll miss the food. Uh, <laughs> obviously, Bri, our style of Bri. What, what um, exactly is it of the Bri that you miss the most? Look, they don't have our type of meat over in Japan. Yeah. So, and the braai broiki, of course. <laughs> um, so just having our own quality food, I think we are a nation that has the, like, oh, the most delicious food. Yeah, hands down. Yeah. I remember when I was in Japan, they were celebrating, like, we've imported some exotic fruit and they made this big hoorah, and it was a mango. And I was like, what? We got that, like, in the shop? Anyway, well, let's get into this journey of yours. You've done an incredible thing. You obviously went on a, a, a contract over to Japan, playing sevens rugby. What was that transition like, going to a place where you don't speak the language, you don't eat the food, it's a complete different culture. What was that transition like for you? Yeah, look, it, it was quite a challenge yeah. um, in terms of the language. I must say they have one of the most difficult languages. Um, I tried to, obviously, I got some education on, yeah. on the language, and I'm currently still busy. Okay, um, did any of it stick? It does stick. Okay. Uh, Can you say good morning, Espresso Show? Um, that's not how they would say it, but Ohio Gazamas. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Uh, good morning. Okay, nice. Um, <laughs> so we're just playing rugby out there. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> um, yeah, like that was a challenge, but you know, I went with the mindset of trying to understand that type of culture and you know, to speak with them, like when you get to a restaurant. Um, the town I was in was quite a, a small town, um, so there was very old people over there, um, and you know some of them don't even speak English. Jeez, yeah. So trying to order something, you kind of had to learn the language to just speak it basically, um, and yeah, it was it was a good challenge, you know, challenge yeah. accepted. Try to learn the language, um, the culture gap, like. You know, we're used to it, like, we're a diverse country and, mm. you know, we know how to, to deal with this stuff um, in a team environment, in a sport in environment. Um, so that was kind of not so much of a challenge, yeah. but learning their ways of doing things, you know, watching, learning, um, and also just trying to speak to your teammates and, you know, see how their lifestyle is about. And that's an interesting concept for me because, I mean, from my experience with team sport, <clears throat> Doing well in a team sport means knowing your team, understanding each other, where you come from. That's not easy when like half your teammates don't speak the language. So does that affect your sort of gameplay? Does that affect the way you, you come into your strategy with regards to playing and playing style? Obviously, you're dealing with a coach and players that, I mean, you need to get on that same level of playing field and understanding how hard is it to get to that point? Yeah, I think on the field as well, you have the language barrier yeah. because some of the players hardly understand when you speak English. Hoi, hoi! <laughs> <laughs> They're just standing there. And, um, you know, your pronunciation. Yes. The way they pronounce things and the way we pronounce things is... There's, you can see the difference. Forget we have um, a South African accent. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, you know, but lucky enough, there was six other foreigners as well that, you know, the club um, had over. So still fortunate enough to speak English with those teammates. Yeah. But, you know, when it comes on the field, you just try to listen to certain words they might say, you know, to understand what they're saying, how they say it, how they pronounce it. Um, and this thing just come naturally, you know, like um, they kind of also a natural type of athlete. So if you go with kind of that flow on the field, um, you just, naturally, you know, everything blends together. Mm. Um, and I think that's why we were so successful as well as a team, not only with the on-field stuff, but the off-field stuff we also, you know, did to get to know each other, um, you know, what makes you tick, what makes you happy, uh, what don't you like, what do you like. Um, you know, those type of things, and those are the small 
small things you can do to get it right on yeah, field as well. The difference. Yeah. Listen, I think for someone in the space that you're in right now, it is an absolute hype. I think everybody's here for it. Everybody's supporting women in sport especially. And you're definitely inspire, in, inspiring a lot of women out there. I think this is something that a lot of females would want to replicate, traveling overseas, pursuing a career elsewhere. What advice would you maybe give them in terms of what you've just experienced and how they can maybe make the most of a very daunting adventure overseas? like the one that you've just taken on? Yeah, look, I think it almost took me eight years to get opportunity to, to go and to play go, overseas. Yeah. Um, I've been almost with SA Rugby since I was 19 years old. Wow. Um, so it just shows you things happen over time. And, you know, when you have a dream, don't give up on your, on your dream. Um, and also, I think, you know, you can define your own success. Uh, I mean, success just doesn't happen overnight. It's, yeah. it's a time-consuming thing. Um, it happens over time. And, you know, when your time is right, you will get your opportunity. So never stop working hard. Um, hard work, discipline, dedication, um, you know, all, all those type of values that you live for as an athlete. Um, you will definitely strive and, and you will reach your own success. Uh, well, from not only the talented, but one of the hardest workers in the room <laughs> and in the country right now. Nadine, thank you so much for sharing your insights, for doing what you've done. You're definitely inspiring. And welcome back home. Uh, welcome <laughs> back to SA Rugby. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing your exploits on the field again. And uh, yeah, thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, thank you for having me today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what an inspiration. We're going to be diving into more conversation like this. Of course, it's all about South Africans that have been of a broad day experience and uh, what we can take from it and appreciate. For now, though, let's head to the kitchen and get some protein in. <laughs>